In a previous tutorial, I showed you how to append a row of data in Google Sheets into another cell in a different sheet tab using the append row method. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take a range of values from one sheet tab and append them to another sheet tab in Google Sheets. Now, I won't be carrying across any of the conditional formatting, data validation, or formulas in this specific tutorial. I have other tutorials on how to use the copy method for this and uh, some other details on that in other tutorials. In this tutorial, we're just gonna cover a simple approach to copying this range and setting the values. If you want to play along, and I encourage that you do, you can grab a copy of this starter sheet in the description below. Once you have a copy of the starter sheet, go into extensions and click on app script, and you should see something like this, perhaps with a white screen in the background here. I just like to geek out with a little bit of dark mode. I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of this file column, file library services column here, just so you can see the code a little bit better. And let's dive in. Okay, so in our starter sheet here, let's just click allow access. All that is, is in our notes here, we have a couple of links over here. And our task here today is to copy this range of data and paste it or append it to the bottom of this range of data here. So we have in our starter sheet already predefined this append data function. Now, before I start, the curious of you have noticed that there are two other examples here, append data two and three. And these are for the two consecutive tutorials in this small series. Okay, let's dive into our code. So this predefined append data function here is the one we're gonna run. So let's hit tab, and let's start off by creating two variables. Now these two variables are going to be the sheets for our source data, which is going to be this incoming data sheet here, and our destination sheet here, name here. So we put them up the top to make it easy to access if we need to change in future. So const, that's a variable that doesn't change. We're gonna say sheet name source is equal to, and that's going to be our source data. So typically I usually go back to the Google sheet here and click on the sheet tab, double click it and hit control C to copy. So I know I'm not going to make a mistake and hit control V to paste. Okay, and now we need our destination one as well. So const sheet, name destination is equal to and the first one is going to be our main sheet here so again we'll do the same double click on the tab hit Control c to copy and put that in our quotation marks here so the next thing we need to do is grab the active spreadsheet and we'll create another constant variable called ss this is typically the common variable term for the spreadsheet so spreadsheet app get active spreadsheet or you could use get active but I think get active spreadsheet is more clear and then we are going to get the source sheet or the sheet source so const sheet source and that's going to be equal to ss dot get sheet I'm going to call this get sheet by name method here and what's going to go into that? Well, that's going to be the name. We've got our sheet name up here called sheet name source. So we'll grab that sheet name source. Cool bananas. All right, let's create our destination sheet as well. So we'll grab that sheet destination too. So const sheet destination is equal to ss get sheet by name. And what are we going to put in here? That's it. So we're going to put in the sheet name destination. So now we need to retrieve the data. And to do that, we need to get the range of the data that we're retrieving. So let's go to incoming data here. So we need to get this selected range here. And to do that, first we need to know the last row that the range is on. Imagine uh, users are coming in here and appending this and each day, and then at the end of the day, you wanna migrate this data into your main sheet. So this last row could change and fluctuate day to day. So we can indicate when the last row is by using the get last row method. So how do we combine this into a variable? So let's go const here and say last row source is equal to sheet 
source. Remember, sheet source is this sheet tab here. And then we can use the get last row method here. Cool. From here now, we can select the range. So our next step is selecting the, the range this data is in. Just basically like doing that. Okay, so here we can say const range source. And then sheet source. Again, so we're going to call that sheet and we're going to say get range. Now get range can take a number of different types of variables. It can take a set of numbers. It can also take A1 notation, which is what we might try and use today. A1 notation is a string. And inside that string, we know it's always going to start up the top here at A2 for this example. So we'll say A2. And then we're going to put our colon in here. And then we want D something. What we can do is append this get last row to it. This will mean that we change our double quotation marks to another string type, and this is called this template literals. So I'm going to put a back tick here to indicate a template literal, and here's another one. And now this allows us to dynamically insert with a dollar sign and curly braces the variable that we've got. So last row source. Cool. Nice. Now that we have the range, we can access all sorts of things with the range. So if I just said range source here, you will see, and then put a dot, you will see a bunch of methods here. So we can clear the formatting, copy it, get background and all that sort of stuff. But all we need is the values. So I'm going to create another constant variable called values source is equal to range source dot get values. Now, don't get confused with value. That'll only get you the first cell in that range. We want the add the S to it and then close it off with some brackets. Nice. So now this will display our values. We can test this easily with a console log, log here. And we can put in our values source and hit save. Now, the first time we're going to do this, we'll go through authentication. So I'm just going to click this append data now. And hit run. Okay, let's go through authorization very quickly. Okay, so now this data has been returned in a two-dimensional array. So we've got these outer brackets here, and then we've got these inner brackets indicating each row. So it's the date as a date timestamp, and then we've got freelancing, graphic design, and three hundred dollars here, just like the date timestamp, freelancing. Graphic design and $300 here. Perfect. Okay, so that test was successful. We can keep that console log in here just for fun. Now, one optional thing we could do, and you can put this one in, is to clear the data once it's been sent. Now, we'll just put this, comment this out for the time being. And when you say range source dot clear content, and we'll just, uh, we'll test that one at the very end. Okay, so our next thing to do once our app script has grasped the data is to paste it in our destination sheet at the bottom of our sheet. So let's head back over to main sheet now. Okay, so let's make a quick note. Paste the data. To indicate the range that we, are, we need to append to, we need to find this first empty row here. And we already learned something like that already with our last row source. So this should be fairly easy. Now, if you want to play ahead and test yourself, you could give it a go now. All right, so let's go const here. First empty row is equal to, and let's grab our sheet destination. And here we've got a list of choices and it is going to be our get last row method here. And this will get this row here on line 17. If we did that, it will overwrite this. We want number 18 here, row 18. So we need to add one. Cool. Okay, so next we need to find the new last row for our A1 notation. So we're going to be getting this range for our destination again. So let's uh, go const new last row oh. is equal to our first empty row 
And then we're going to add the number of rows in our value source here. Now, if we go into our execution logs, we can see here we've got one, two, three, four rows here. So if we get the length of this array, so this outer array here, this will tell us it is four. So if I say values source dot length, then that will give us four. Now, because we're starting here, if we add four to this, it'll be one, two, three, four, which is not correct. So let's uh, first correct our length, th, and then subtract one. Awesome. Okay, so now let's get this range. So const range destination, we'll call it, is equal to sheet destination dot get range again and we'll use a1 notation again there's other approaches but we'll just keep it with a1 today and we'll use our back ticks so our template literals and we'll say a and uh, dollar sign curly braces first empty row colon d dollar sign curly braces new mu new last row there we go cool and then finally we need to set our values in this new range so here we can go range destination dot set values don't forget the s and then inside that we need a 2d array fortunately we've got this value source here so let's just grab this hit control c and control v hit save Let's go ahead and give it a run. So remember, this data here will should be added into this range here. Run. Success. It's been added in successfully. Okay, so now that we've tested this, we can, uh, if we run it again, it's going to add the next set of values into here from this. And imagine perhaps at the end of day, you want to clear the contents from this range. Well, you can, on the range source, use the clear content method here. So let's just uh, take this off comment with a uh, control forward slash and hit save. And we'll see this appear, disappear, and then those four values being added or appended to the bottom here. Let's go ahead and do that. And there they are. Fantastic. So this is a fairly useful approach to appending data in Google Sheets. However, there are a few gotchas. In our next tutorial, we are going to try and append data to this sheet here. Now, let me show you a quick example of what happens if we use the same function. So I'm just going to grab this main sheet, Alt here, and replace it with main sheet, and hit save. And I'm going to, again, hide the clear content because we're in testing. And don't forget, we've got to uh, copy this back into our incoming data. And we are good. We'll hit save here. Okay, and let's head over to our main sheet one and see what happens. Run. As you can see, it's been appended to the bottom of this range here. Why? Because we have this rolling total that's being generated on the right hand side here. So it will always try and go to the end of the new blank space. The rolling con total continues down indefinitely. So it will just add in a new space at the bottom. We don't want that, of course. So we need another approach to solving this issue. That's what we'll be covering in the next tutorial. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more tutorials like this, subscribe. Until next time.